All right, everyone, welcome back from the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Thursday, July 14th, 2022. If you like the video, give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me at carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Take advantage of the $15 a month uh, price point uh, is that we'll be changing um, probably in the next couple of weeks or at least by the end of the month. And again, absolutely crushing it on this year, even in a bear market. Anyways, let's get into... The charts here so spiders again gapping down today just like yesterday on the back of jpm so jpm getting hit on earnings um, down four percent on the day coming off the lows morgan stanley got hit a little bit as well but this is actually close to the flat line now it did make a new 52 week low um, but it does look like it's going to hold the previous 52 week lows by the close and again has a decent shot of even closing green today so morgan stanley kind of uh Putting in an impressive recovery. We do have Citigroup, uh, BlackRock, and uh, United Health reporting tomorrow. So uh, UNH actually green. So those will be um, some potential market movers as well. Now, another big market mover today was TSM, and this one was interesting. Uh, so Taiwan Semi obviously you know, has some geopolitical interest in, involved in it, but they had good earnings. Uh, nice little pop here, a little ABC kind of up pattern there for TSM. And it's helping out tech for for sure. Uh, take a look at this SMH here, up two percent on the day again. Nice little uh, ABC kind of up move um, near term. You know, maybe you can have upside to about that two fifteen handle. You know, there is some resistance in that area, but a nice performance there for the semis, and that is giving tech a lift. Tech is uh, green on the day, has been green for about an hour now, um, even with the gap down. And we talked about this yesterday. You know, big tech especially has a much better fundamental case right now it, you know if we are headed into a recession um essentially that you know it, it just has to do with rates and 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 how that works but uh, if you take a look at the spiders here yesterday we talked about that trend line we gapped down and we closed basically just underneath it and obviously i'm just going to get rid of this because it's it's just been too too much too violated at this point even if we were to close green it's just it's too sloppy but if you take a look at the triple q's you know, that trend line is still pretty valid. So we've been holding that trend line, got a bit off of yesterday, a little test candle today. And now looking like we want to close green here, there's still about 20 minutes left. So we'll see what we get. But overall, uh, a nice recovery here for the market. It does look like the triple Qs are going to stay above that 20 moving average. Um, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now. And if big tech is doing well, then generally you want to give the market the upside bias. It's going to you know, it's going to outperform. And, and the thing that's interesting to me is we've had really bad inflation data the last two days, and yet the market's been able to rally off the lows. So um, it's been pretty resilient here so far. We'll see if this can result in a little bit, like a little bit of a coiling pattern uh, for a move up here um, for, you know, again, some type of a kind of summer doldrums sort of float up rally. Um, but overall, you know, this is, it's still a tricky market here. You can see we Try to put in some bullish consolidation now we're fading a little bit it's been very hard for this market to um, follow through on any of this action so you definitely have to be very careful it is also an options x week so a lot of that is probably related to that there's been lots of rumors uh this week lots of upgrades and downgrades um you know netflix doing the deal with uh, microsoft yesterday we had rumors about um actually not rumors senate bill um <clears throat> In regards to marijuana legalization, see MJ and MSOS getting bids there. Um, you know, we've had Fed speakers every day, so there's been so it's pretty <clears throat> pretty volatile markets for the most part, and you got to be careful. <clears throat> excuse me, in this environment here. But again, markets able to rally off the lows. Take a look at Apple, that is leading big tech right here and really kind of propping the sector up. You see Tesla just scratching back to the flat line. Nvidia having a nice day again back on the back of semiconductor, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. So a bit of a mixed bag um, and it's a tricky market to trade here. But again, if we can, you know, rally back to the flat line, if we can have some follow through on this upside tomorrow, um, you know, there's a good chance this market can rally up, at least on the uh, S&P here up to this trend line. Um, it might be a lower high. Um, so definitely keep that in mind, but there's a bit of a divergence building with tech. So I could very well see tech making a higher high here um, as opposed to the S&P. So a little bit of a diverging market. And again, that's with the weakness in XLE coming down here today and XLF as well, obviously with those banks. So again, it's tough. We're in earnings season. Uh, it's a tough market to trade. You only want to take the best setups right now. Um, but overall, you know, 
if the volume remains light and if we can get through earnings season, I think this market can hold up throughout the summer. Um, I don't know how much longer it can hold after that, but for right now, you know, it's hanging in there. It's again, it's been resilient. We've come off the lows two days in a row now um, after pretty bad news. So, um, yeah, that's really all you can say at the moment. The market's trying to hang in there and um, we'll just leave it at that for now. Anyways, let's talk about, so we talked about semis already. Let's cover cloud. So cloud a little bit weaker yesterday. And the one thing I don't like is you kind of made, you had a nice um, series of higher lows potentially in here. And now you may do have a higher low here on the daily after today's action, but I would have really liked it if we had made a higher low yesterday. Um, yeah, much more so than this. I mean, we'll still give it the benefit of the doubt for now if it can come off the lows and have some follow through tomorrow going into the end of the week. Again, the weekly close is going to be very important on the IGV because it's been a strong sector lately. Although this week it's starting to change, it's starting to flip over a little bit, and we're starting to see the semis, which have been weak previously in relation to cloud software, we're seeing them start to take leadership. So a little bit of a change in dynamic there. We'll see what the weekly close looks like uh, for IGV, but overall it is pulling back, trying to make a higher low. Biotech, XBI still remains to be strong here um, above these three moving averages, and you're still kind of consolidating in this upper range above the 100 MA. The only problem is you've done, this is so much resistance up here. Um, I can't really see the upside being that high, you know, maybe 90 bucks um, at the most part here, but this would have to do a lot of backing and filling to get through all of this. I mean, you, you started, you know, you put in this low here on January 24th and you really stayed in this range until, you know, it's basically three months, so April 21st. So there's a lot of consolidation in here for this to get through. So it's gonna be hard for it to break through that, but for what it's worth, it's a, it's a strong sector right now um, in a weak market. So we'll, we'll give it the upside bias for now. Dow Transport's again, continuing to be weak. Again, Delta reported yesterday. I think some of the um, the rest of the airlines report next week, if I'm not mistaken, um, still made a 52-week low today. The rail stocks are really the the story here. CSX 52-week lows, Norfolk Southern, uh, Union Pacific, um, all making 52-week lows or very close to new 52-week lows. And those those rail stocks are really dragging the sector down here. Um, if we can get the chart of UNP to come up here. But either way, um, must be getting some bandwidth in here. So notorious think or swim problems. Here we go. So there's UNP close to 52 week lows as well. Uh, but in any case, so rails, uh, we talked about the jets. They are reporting next week. Um, again, close to 52 week lows. Delta had a pretty big sell off yesterday, but it is recovering a little bit today. So um, again, nothing really too new to report there. Anyways, transport, let's go on to rates here. So interest rates. Um, still fractionally higher here on the 10 year. Um, if we take a look at the 30 year, again, fractionally higher. What's interesting though, is that they're starting to change direction. And I read on Twitter today, this is the first time, and I think the last seven or eight CPI prints that the TLT, uh, went green yesterday, um, the day of the CPI print. Um, whereas the last seven or eight CPI prints, TLT was negative with the high inflation print. And so TLT green with high inflation. Again, like I said yesterday, the bond market does appear to be like sniffing something out here as far as the Fed pivot or, you know, again, like I said yesterday, the closer we get to, you know, the, the, the more aggressive the Fed gets, the faster we go into recession, which is the faster we get rate cuts. So it does look like the bond market is starting to call the bluff here. Um, but again, we got to wait for confirmation. I'd like to see a higher high here on TLT. And I'd like to see this um, 120 level really break. I don't know if it does that in the near term, um, but it is coming off the lows. You're making higher lows. And I do like what I see on the uh, daily time frame. Again, T uh, TNX here, this trend line goes, it's headed back to that 2.4, 2.5 area. So we'll continue to keep that on watch here. HYG um, also pulling back here. It's still stuck in this range. Got to get above these pivots here at about 75.50, but still holding this green bar low on the daily. So you could make a case you got kind of a micro kind of flag pattern. We'll see if it can get some uh, follow through tomorrow. But again, recovering off the lows, just kind of like the market here. And it is, you know, market is starting to hold up here into the close, which is a good sign. It kind of dipped a little bit yesterday. Remember uh, the spiders were holding trend here and then they kind of dipped below that 20 moving average in the final 
half hour or so and today it looks like they're holding up here so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now today but overall that hyg there you know it's it's holding this trend but it's got to get above these pivots here uh, if it's going to have any sort of meaningful rally uh, and then home builders here Again, continuing to hold up well, a little bit of a pullback there for XHB, ITB, same kind of deal, but this is all just kind of bullish chop right now in the near term. Again, I don't see a too, uh, you know, a ton of upside for them uh, overall, but they are hanging in there again, kind of like XBI, their strong sector right now in a weak market. Same thing with VNQ, although it did break back below this previous red bar. And it is rallying off the lows, but again, you wanna see this get going, you wanna see this reverse that, that's one, two, three, four, five days in a row down in fact six out of the last seven days down so you want to see that push back above that 20 moving average if it's going to make a type of uh, abc up move um, here at some point in the near term anyways we talked about financials uh, let's go to energy so crude did dip down to that 90 handle got very close 90.56 nice recovery through the 20 moving average or 200 moving average excuse me again i don't see anything significant here other than possible lower highs on the daily um, weekly got basically right down to that 50 month, uh, 50 week moving average so that did coincide with that daily 200 and this pivot low you had a little bit of a micro consolidation there so it, there is a little bit of support here but again i am expecting lower highs at this point and, and another leg down in crude oil same thing with xle here again very oversold um, xop and OIH, same thing, dipping below this pivot here. OIH is wickedly oversold at this point, um, so it is due for a bounce. But again, these all do have lower to go, so please keep that in mind. Nat gas here did get above that uh, red bar high, and it was able to close. So the close is 659, six, 659 spot six, and we had, uh, yeah, so it just did not close below that on a daily basis, but it looks like it's gonna be able to do it today. So we just closed like within with literally less than a penny below that level yesterday that we talked about. But it looks like we're going to get above it today. So I would give Nat Gas the upside bias back to this trend line, maybe even that 50 day moving average. But again, I still expect the lower high at some point and we'll, we'll see another leg down in Nat Gas, uh, which will be a buying opportunity. But just be patient with it at, the, at this current time. Don't chase it right now. Um, this is a volatile market. You definitely don't want to chase things because, you know, especially during an options X week, there's lots of volatility um, and Nat gas can really, I mean, it can rip your face off if you don't get it at the exact level. So be careful with it there. Dollar index did make new highs again, got above 109. So 109.24, um, I have max move this going up to about 110. So that's my max move now um, on the dollar index. It did pull back pretty sharply off the highs here intraday. You can see it did dip down pretty nicely. Um, not quite a topping tail. You know, I would have liked to have seen it close down here, down below 108.50. That would have given me kind of a topping tail signal. Um, but overall, um, if it does pull back, you know, for now, you got support here at 108.75. And that daily 20 moving average, if it gets through that, it's back to that 103.82 area. Um, and it looks like it's a, a long way away, but you got to figure this made a humongous move in the last three weeks. So five point move on the dollar index is a, is no small, no small move, especially for it to happen in three weeks. Um, but that is just kind of the, the volatile environment that we're in right now. Um, and I would give the mark, I would give the dollar the upside bias to about uh, 110, but not saying it necessarily gets there. Anyways, gold did come nicely off the lows here. Um, did reverse pretty much all of that move from yesterday. Finished off the lows. I think this is oversold. It's into some decent support, and I do expect it to get a bounce here in the short term. Um, silver, same kind of deal. This did get through that 19 area. Got all the way down to 18. I have a buy level on this, but it's lower. Um, so be aware of that. But uh, nice little dump here on silver again. These are getting oversold, very oversold as well. Um, platinum, new 52-week lows again, still holding that 18-20 handle. So I do expect that to get a bid here. And palladium retesting this trend line, um, although it is on the weaker side for what that's worth. And then copper also another 52-week low here again mega oversold here i mean just look at this sell-off here in copper this is down over 30 percent in the last month so um <laughs> pretty pretty dr dramatic move uh for a commodity with the market cap the size of, of copper but um 
just amazing sell-off here. I still think this has headed lower too, but in the near term, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it had a, a pretty sizable snapback rally here. Um, then Bitcoin actually finally, so we talked about yesterday, it's got its work cut out for it, got to get back above that 20. It is above that now. Um, it, this candle will close at 8 p.m., so we still got four hours for this to fail. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't rule it out yet, but you're back above that, um, that green bar low. So near term, Give it the benefit of the doubt, but this is still weekly. And I, again, last weekend, the video I said the problem with Bitcoin is you got a weekly inside bar on the bear on the um, on the weekly time frame. So this is a bearish inside bar on the weekly, and that is the dominant candle here uh, over the daily time frame. But for now, you know it can get a little bit of a bid if it can get back above that twenty and establish itself. Um, but overall, crypto is weak, and it looks poised for a move lower here. Anyways, guys. Let's wrap it up here. Let's take a look at the spiders one more time. So going into the close here, yeah, we're holding up, holding trend. Unlike yesterday, we were dipping into the close and it looks like we're holding up okay, especially with big tech leading Apple and the semis having a nice move there. Dow also just below the high of the day. So nice little recovery here for the market. Tesla now going green as well. So nice little recovery here for the market. Um, we'll see what we get tomorrow. We need to see some follow through. If you're the bulls, you want to see a gap and go tomorrow and really kind of slam the door shut um, on any sort of comeback attempt for the bears but in any case we'll see what we get tomorrow it is options x so expect a lot of volatility and i would expect nothing less from a market like this this year anyways guys come find me on carnivoretrades.com take advantage of the free trial take care and i'll talk to you all tomorrow